Hi everyone! Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome! It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, welcome back guys. So, welcome to your readings for August of 2018. Summer is almost over. Boo. I know, it sucks. But, on a happier note, I want to give a big ol' happy birthday to the rest of the Leo clan that are finishing out your birthdays. It's your birthday season. I hope you guys had a great one. And I want to extend a happy birthday to the, Var the Virgos. Yeah, we're going to be going into your season soon. So, happy birthday to you guys. I hope you enjoy. Um, so, down to business. These are general readings, okay? So, take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Yes, don't try to like fit something in there and then, you know, when it, you know, it really doesn't resonate, it doesn't fit. Yeah. Um, I am officially back in business when it comes to personal readings. Yeah. So if you would like a personal reading with me, you can find all of the information in the description box below, um, which includes the readings that I offer, a little bit about them and my email address. Yes. And their prices. If upon reading through them, you don't really know what reading you think would work best for you, just go ahead and email me. We can chat a little bit about your situation and then I should be able to decipher which reading would be best for you. Yeah. If you are in the New York City metro area, I will be at Om Shanti Bookshop every Monday from 11 to 5 p.m. That is located on 14th Street between 1st, I'm sorry, between 2nd and 3rd Avenue in Manhattan. Please come by and see me. I would love to meet you in person. You can either come through as a walk-in, you know, at the time that you want, whenever it's convenient for you, or you can go to the website, which can be found in the description box below, and get their phone number. And from there, you can schedule a reading in advance. Yeah, definitely works out well that way. For the readings this month, I will be using the Golden Universal Tarot. I love this deck. Look, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Like, it's so pretty and golden. Well, actually, you can't, you can't really see it that way, but you'll see it when we get into the reading, yeah? And then I will be pulling some Oracle Guidance from the Fairy Forest deck by Lucy Cavendish. Yes? Yeah. Anything else? Anything else? I don't think so. So, without further ado, let's get to it, yeah? Hey Taurus, welcome to your reading for August 2018. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get to it, guys. Hey Spirit, please make me a clear channel for all Taurans, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages for Taurus for the month of August to serve the highest good of all involved in 2018. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Spirit. All right, Taurus. So I I started channeling your energies before, you know, I officially started the video and blah, blah, blah. And I started to see a field, like just a rolling field, maybe of hay or um, I don't know, some sort of grain or something. And I was getting in, like I was getting a feeling of like seeing a bull just laying out in a field, basking in the sunlight, without a care in the world. And so I feel like, Taurus, a lot of you feel like you need a vacation. <laughs> I know I do. Lord, do I know. Fucking right, I need a vacation. This card... Don't take it. Okay. Um, yeah. Taurus, you need a break. Take it slow. Take it easy on yourself. Like, this is a really rough time um, with all the astrological transits that are going on, with Mars being so close to us right now. You know, there's a lot of heat. Um, it's really fucking hot here. I'm in New York City. It's just, it's hot as shit. And it's exhausting, okay? Not to mention all the changes and downloads and ascension that we're all going through and getting. It's just... Just take a break. I'm hearing respite. Very much as Four of Swords energy. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Yeah. Yeah, you need a break. But anyway, other than that, things feel okay. Things feel good. Ish. You're plugging along. I mean, it's nothing new for a Tauren. You know, Taurans can 
can bear a heavy burden consistently for lar large periods of time, if not a whole lifetime. So yeah, okay, it's nothing new. Same shit, different toilet. <laughs> Oh, God. But, yeah. Okay. One more shuffle for you, Taurus. I'm seeing white and yellow. Um, white being divinity, divine protection. Yellow being strength, illumination, willpower. You're really charging through, and the divine has your back. And that's a good thing. So, keep that in mind. Overall energy. Oof. We're starting you with the Nine of Cups in reverse. Some of you might be indulging um, in some of the uh, material comforts <laughs> in order to cope right now. Um, this could be food, alcohol, drugs, sex, whatever. But you're almost like just trying to like drown your like drown away the pain just to keep going, and this is and it's. What I'm really getting from this, I don't really feel like it's anything all that serious. It's just you're kind of running yourself into, into the ground a little bit. You just, you need to take some more time to rest. And recharge so that you don't have to like drink a bunch or, you know, drink a bunch of energy drinks or something. You know, some stuff like that. Uh -oh. We've got the Four of Pentacles upright. We've got the King of Cups in reverse. And we've got the Empress, which could symbolize you, Taurus. But the Empress is in reverse also. Ooh. There are a few things going on here. Um... Some of you might be holding on to a situation with the Four of Pentacles here. Or someone might be wanting to hold on to you. This is a general reading, so um, the energies can flow in any way. But someone is holding on. And I feel like whoever this King of Cups is here, this is who's holding on. Well, actually, it could go either way because someone could be holding on to the King of Cups. The King of Cups in reverse is someone that's kind of emotionally manipulative, like, or emotionally unavailable. Someone that also is not necessarily willing to share their emotions. And if they are sharing their emotions, they're not necessarily all that honest about it. They're just doing it in a way, in a manipulative way to get what they want like sharing only certain emotions or making it seem like they feel one way when in reality it's like a bait and switch type of situation. With the Empress in reverse here, Taurus, this really could be your energy. Um... Uh, what I'm what I'm really picking up here is you're not you're just not willing to try. You're not willing to give or to nurture a situation anymore. And you're very much in the Empress power, you know. But it's like you're not willing to give that power to this situation anymore, in some cases. In other cases, this is talking about infertility. That was one of the first things that I heard. Now, this could be if you're trying to get pregnant, um, you might be might be having trouble with that. Um, someone might want to have children with you and you're not having it. <laughs> um, but there is a definite need to let go here of something. Someone needs to let go of something with the four of pentacles. And to be quite honest, uh, coming up in a Taurus and in a Taurus reading, this probably is your energy, Taurus. Stubbornly holding on to something that you know you need to let go of. Now, on the other hand, this could be someone really trying to hold on to you. Or maybe even the idea of some sort of relationship with you. And what I'm seeing in relation to that is that they're holding on to the relationship, but they, they cannot 
give emotionally right now. Like they're all up. They're uh, in. Uh, their emotions are all over the place. And it's showing up as the king of cups in this situation because there's action that wants to be taken, but that is blocked for whatever reason. Now, on the other hand, what I'm also getting from this four of pentacles, which is weird because I never really, I don't really ever see it this way, but now I'm seeing it for this situation. Someone is really standing their ground. Someone has put their foot down, is what I've heard. And it's going to be a challenge to get them to open back up. I'm not saying it's impossible, but what I'm, but what I'm saying is, and especially since this is a four, someone found their worth, their self-worth, and now they're holding on to it for dear life. Like in this situation, those four pentacles are exactly what they needed to see about themselves in order to know exactly what they're worth. And now they're not letting go of it at all. I'm picking up a form of integrity here in that sense. But whatever is going on here, it's making somebody like just drown their sorrows to cope, to cope with it. Okay, moving on, let's get into the storyline here. We've got the hanged man. Coupled with, ooh, good, the five of swords in reverse. So conflict is being released and someone is starting to see the situation from a different light. And I'm getting it, whoever, whoever, this, whoever was the shit starter here, whoever was the one that was constantly causing drama, being argumentative, um, um, deceitful, spiteful, um, combative, now they're starting to see things, they're, they're starting to see the bigger picture. And I feel like it's because there, there's been some sort of isolation whether that be like a self-imposed isolation or whether, you know, someone cut someone off, someone blocked someone, like the communication was like ceased. Now someone's starting to get it in a different way than they did before. Okay, moving forward, we've got the Wheel of Fortune. In this sense, and the Wheel of Fortune is upright, so I'm picking up some sort of divine timing here. Coupled with, ooh, the Ace of Cups in reverse. Wow. Oh, wow, okay. Um, what I'm getting here is as this wheel turns, this Ace of Cups is going to be turned upright. It's, it's, it's reversed right now because just like that King of Cups is reversed, it's blocked. Someone wants to make some sort of emotional offer, but that's blocked right now. But with divine timing and maybe as the seasons change, we could be talking, um, I don't know, like fall or spring is what I'm getting. There could be a change where the offer might come through. I mean, don't quote me on that. I don't normally do timelines, but seasons changing is what I hear and that could be seasons within the self too you know but there's an offer that wants to come through and divine timing will let this happen the cup will this ace of cups will turn upright eventually and all because someone has started to see things differently yeah with the hanged man and the five of swords in reverse all right, moving forward, we've got the Page of Pentacles in reverse with, ooh, the Knight of Swords. <laughs> it's like someone grew up and now wants to rush in. Also, on the other hand, this is energy of someone wanting to fight. I just saw 1156 on the counter. 1111. Because I really see this Knight of Swords rushing towards this Page of Pentacles, like ready to fuck them up. <laughs> and that's, ugh, that's kind of scary. If that's energy that you're experiencing, I'm not going to necessarily say that you're in the wrong. Just be careful. 
because that's destructive. But I'm also getting an energy of someone is is st growing out of a page of pentacles state. Um, and like they want to send a message because pages are about messengers are, are about messages, but in a like immature sense, maybe like a childish sense. But here in this situation, someone, especially with this enlightenment, this change in perspective that's happening with the hanged man and the five of swords in reverse, it's like someone is growing up and is getting the message and wants to send it even more now than they did in the past. But it is from a much more mature space. The problem is they are wanting to just like rush in. And put an end to this, um, to whatever conflict is going on here, to put an end to the immature aspects of the situation. Hmm. Next, we have Five of Pentacles. Coupled with, ooh, Temperance. So Patience. Someone feels left out in the cold, but honestly, what the what the, what this is saying is this is a necessary part of the process. I'm hearing what goes around comes around. So if you were in a situation where someone left you out in the cold and now you're kind of like done with it and you're moving on and you're now leaving them out in the cold, well, Temperance is saying that needed to happen because both sides needed to feel this energy and learn from it. Ultimately, even though it may not look like it or feel like it right now, ultimately this is helping bring you two guys closer together, okay? I feel like whoever is represented by this King of Cups here in reverse is the one that's feeling left out in the cold. This could be a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Um, but it doesn't have to be. It could be any sign. Also... You could be dealing with a Sagittarius, because I believe Temperance is Sagittarius. All right, moving forward, we've got Seven of Wands, standing your ground, putting boundaries in place. This could be you, Taurus. It could be the other person, especially if, the, if there were a lot of people involved in the situation and there was a lack of boundaries to a certain extent. Now there are, someone is putting up some serious boundaries. Hey, death, upright, could be dealing with a Scorpio. So there's that water sign again. But that's exactly what I was picking up here. Someone is changing to the point where they're putting boundaries in place that weren't there in the past. And it was needing to go through this situation in order for them to understand that. Because like I said, in some of these cases, there were people, there were all these cooks in the kitchen. You see all these six wands that are down here? All these cooks in the kitchen putting in their two cents and this person up at the top holding this wand here and the past was allowing them to like season the dish, but it just turned into just a disgusting mess. And so now change and transformation is coming and there are boundaries that are being put in place that weren't there in the past that needed to be there. Yeah. Moving forward. Ace of Swords, upright, epiphany, aha moment. This is falling right under the Ace of Cups. Ace of Swords, coupled with, there it is, the Ten of Swords. So, this death and transformation. Someone is done being backstabbed. Someone is done backstabbing. Someone is done being used, taken advantage of. Interestingly enough, this Ace of Swords to me is speaking to self-worth. And I feel like this is energy from both sides of the equation, whether this is a, a love relationship or whether this is just what, like a, whatever, whatever the situation is, I'm feeling this in this, this energy on both sides. Mm -hmm. Change and transformation. Truth, clarity. 
And it doesn't necessarily mean that truth and clarity is going to be spoken. However, it could be with this Knight of Swords here. But it's at least understood. Things are much clearer now. Or will become much clearer. And cycles can actually be put to an end. You have the Ten of Swords here, right under the, the Wheel of Fortune, which is the Ten in the Minor Arcana. Or, I'm sorry, the Major Arcana. Death and Transformation. Yep. Seeking truth also is what I'm hearing. Seeking truth and clarity to get out of this Ten of Swords energy. I'm going to sneeze. Maybe not. Okay, <laughs> moving on. We've got, woohoo, the chariot. Could be dealing with a cancer. There's that water sign again. Um, this could be this could be energy that's in your chart too. But ultimately, there is movement forward. Coupled with, whoa, look at that. The five of cups in reverse. Someone is done feeling regretful and remorseful. Someone is done crying over spilled milk and they're moving on. Could be you, Taurus. Could be someone else. But either way... Somebody is getting their emotions balanced, back in balance, and is moving on full speed ahead towards what it is they truly want. Could even be towards this Two of Cups situation. Because, I mean, the Two of Cups didn't come out officially, but um, you have the three cups that are spilled in front of this person and then the two cups behind them. And all they have to do is stop focusing on those three cups that have spilled and turn around and pick up those two cups that they still have. So now, with this Five of Cups in reverse, coupled with the Chariot, someone is definitely moving forward towards what could be a Two of Cups situation. Very nice. Finally, the Star, Aquarius. Healing. Divine Guidance. Things may not be all that clear right now, but there is still movement in a better direction. The star is coupled with, hey now, the emperor, Aries. I feel like there is movement. Whoa, whoa, guys, look at this. I just realized this. We've got the counterparts. We've got the empress and the emperor. What I was literally just about to say is I feel like there's movement in a direction towards potentially a divine masculine energy. Um, a counterpart, a soulmate. There's movement. There's also healing surrounding this situation with a counterpart, a soulmate. This could be a twin flame because we have the emperor and the empress, which are like um, depictions of the divine masculine and the divine feminine, the most co the, the the strongest ones. There are others, but mostly the divine. But mostly the emperor and the empress are the depiction of the divine masculine, and divine feminine in twin flame situations. And we've got the counterparts here, Taurus. So, okay. This Empress in reverse, she got burned. The Empress got burned here by the Emperor. So this is why she's reversed. This is why she's closed off to the Emperor. But there is healing that's happening here. And ultimately, whatever is going on, this healing, this healing represented by the star is helping guide you to the Divine Masculine. This doesn't have to be twin flames, though. This could be, soul, this could be uh, Divine Partnerships. The, the way I see it, Divine Partnerships and Twin Flames are like pretty much the same thing. It's just Twin Flames have a little bit of have a different responsibility in the world. <laughs> My, my. My, my, my. So the Divine Masculine is definitely this King of Cups here that's reversed. Could also be the Four of Pentacles. Holding on to the situation. Could also be holding on to their emotions. Holding on to the past. And drowning their sorrows because of it. But that's just the overall energy. My, oh my. Interesting. 
I just did the Aries video, and Aries had a ton of Major Arcana come out. And it looks like Taurus, you do too. You have quite a bit. You've got the Empress, the Hanged Man, Wheel of Fortune, Temperance, Death, the Chariot, the Star, and the Emperor. This is big. This is big stuff. Okay. Let's get into the Oracle Guidance. Whoops. You get back here. You get back here. <laughs> One more shuffle. One more shuffle. Okay. Best message, please, Spirit, for Taurus in relation to this woo reading. There it is. Volva, card number 33. Um, pros, uh, prophecy, guidance, direction. Definitely speaking to the star energy that came out in the last bit. Card number 33. Boils down to a six, which is a card, a number of balance and harmony within love and family and home. Yes? Vulva, prophecy, guidance, direction. There are those who can see beyond the present moment who can see the way the web is woven, and who can connect to its strands and share with others the messages they long to hear. Such, is, uh, such a one is the vulva, a witch, a seer, a woman who can see beyond the physical world. When she comes to you, you are being asked to connect to your own roots, symbolized by her staff, and you can connect deeply into the truth, uh, I'm sorry, into the earth and begin to listen to the language of the world and to receive its messages. It is imperative that you honor her and her message through respectful listening and making space to act on the guidance given. The advice and magical guidance given through this card is feminine in its aspect, yet it is anything but stereotypical. It is strong and wild and fierce. There is a ruthless quality to the truth that will, come, that will now come to you, but because of its clarity, there will be a great healing. You are also being asked to consider your independence, to lo no longer give up your freedom simply to have relationships. Oof. The vulva is not celibate, but she, will, but she never allows herself to be possessed by a relationship. This too is your fate for a time. Hear now the voice of the vulva. Take up your staff, strike it into the earth, and listen for the messages to come forth. And actually, Taurus, this is directly connected to that image of a field that I was getting. So some of you really just need to take a break and connect with the earth. And listen to what the spirits of the earth have to say to you. The guidance that will come from the earth. And I feel like that's what the Empress is also saying here in reverse. It's like you need to connect with Mother Earth a little more. Get grounded. Understand who you truly are and what you're truly here for. In some cases, if you're having like if you're having trouble figuring out what you, you what path you want to go on or whatnot, get grounded. Get in touch with the earth. That could definitely be what the uh, the emperor and the star is symbolizing here for you because the emperor is the go getter, is the doer, the action taker, the ruler. Okay, so some of you might really need to get grounded in order to figure out what it is you want to do so that you can move in that direction. Okay, Taurus, so there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to connecting with you guys again for the month of September. Yeah, take care. Bye.